From the outside, a family can seem like they have the perfect life and can be all smiles, but the truth behind it all could be much darker. think we know our loved ones, especially when we make a long-term commitment to them. But in reality, sometimes people don't reveal their ugly sides until it's far too late. Cosmetologist Susan Cox met Joshua Powell through their common faith in the Latter-day Saints Church, and they fell in love and married at the Portland, Oregon Latter-day Saints Temple in 2001, where Susan's family resided. Everything seemed to be going well for the young couple, and they were elated with the birth of their two sons, Charlie and Braden. Deciding they wanted to be even closer to Josh's mother and siblings, they picked up their roots and moved to West Valley City, Utah. Both Susan and Josh found work and the growing family seemed to be happy, but that happiness was short-lived. Susan confided in friends that her marriage was in turmoil and causing her constant stress, mainly due to Josh's extremely controlling personality, his extramarital affair, and his exorbitant spending habits. Using Susan's credit, Josh managed to rack up a $200,000 debt, money he didn't have the means to repay, forcing him to declare bankruptcy in 2007. But the more Susan's friends heard of what her marriage to Josh was really like behind closed doors, the more they realized the move from the Northwest to Utah may have not been to be closer to Josh's family, but to escape Stephen Powell, Josh's father, who'd been making inappropriate sexual advances towards Susan since the marriage began. Still, no one, not even those closest to Susan, knew how truly afraid she was for her and her children's lives, or how much danger they were actually facing. With things between Josh and Susan growing increasingly hostile, discontent turned to fear. After speaking with an attorney, Susan began preparing for what she felt was Josh's inevitable meltdown. She first composed a will saying that she wanted it documented that there was extreme turmoil in her marriage and that if she were to die unexpectedly, not to believe it was an accident, even if it looked like one. The final line of the will revealed who it was she feared, reading, For family and friends of Susan, all except for Josh Powell, my husband. I don't trust him. Then she grabbed a camera and documented the family's possessions, many of which she says were purchased by Josh with her money without her permission. Uh, this is me. July 29th, 2008. It is 1233. Mountain time. Covering all my bases, making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us that our assets are documented. The video shows a woman clearly fed up with her husband's spending habits as she shows the family files, Josh's upgraded computer, his frivolous Home Depot purchases for saws, drill sets, bikes, a $300 remote, and his RC motor car accessories. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment, all purchased with Susan's credit. Hope everything works out and we're all happy and live happily ever after as much as that's possible. But tragically, the happily ever after that Susan wanted wasn't in anyone's future. On December 7th, 2009, the Powell boys were absent from daycare and Susan failed to show up for work while Josh hadn't been seen since the day before. Growing increasingly worried, Susan's parents, Chuck and Judy Cox, called local authorities and asked them to do a welfare check on their daughter. But when police got to the house, there was no response. And upon entering, they found nobody inside. It was then that Josh happened to pull into the driveway with his two sons, but Susan was nowhere to be seen. He claimed he'd taken the boys on a surprise camping trip and that Susan had stayed home, that she had been sleeping when they left. Police found this immediately suspicious considering the previous night's blizzard and Josh's lack of concern for his wife's whereabouts, but both boys said that they had in fact been camping. Yet Susan, days later, still hadn't turned up. 
Investigators launched into a full-blown search at the same time police scoured Susan's home for any indication of where she might have gone, and what they found was troubling, to say the least. There were traces of Susan's blood along with the life insurance policy for Susan totaling $1.5 million, and in her office, they uncovered the video of her assets along with the secret will which led police to be even more wary of Josh. Just 10 days after Susan was last seen, he liquidated her retirement fund, canceled her chiropractic appointments, and told his co-workers how easy it would be to hide a body in an abandoned desert mine shaft. He even pulled his sons from their daycare, but not before workers took notice of the children's strange behavior. Charlie at one point exclaimed that his mother was dead, while Braden drew a picture of his mother tied up in the trunk of a van. Even still, Josh continued to deny his involvement, and with no physical evidence tying him to the disappearance, he had no reason to stick around. Under the guise of staying with his father for the holidays, Josh fled to Washington with his sons, but he only returned to Utah to pack up his things and move up north permanently with his father. However, the authorities weren't done with Josh. He was forced to undergo psychological tests to prove he was mentally and financially capable of taking care of Charlie and Braden. Being a job hopper didn't bode well for his monetary stability, but that wasn't the main concern of social workers when they discovered what was on Josh's father, Stephen Powell's computer. In addition to over 4,000 photos of Susan taken without her permission, some with close-ups, they found a mass of child pornography, including voyeuristic footage of his adolescent neighbors. Friends and family of Susan confirmed Stephen's sexual obsession with his daughter-in-law, and he was arrested and charged for possession of child pornography. The discovery wasn't enough to arrest Josh, but it was enough for him to lose custody of the children temporarily to Susan's parents. After, Josh spent his time slandering Susan's reputation, releasing pages from her adolescent diary, claiming she was mentally ill, and painting himself as a loving and devoted father, abandoned by his wife for an imaginary other man. Ironically, family ties with the Cox family disintegrated when he accused them of going on a slanderous warpath to tarnish his reputation. Even still, on February 3, 2012, Josh expressed desire to reconcile with his in-laws to a psychologist who said that mending ties looked unlikely unless Josh could prove he wasn't involved in Susan's disappearance or if she turned up alive and unharmed. After a long moment of silence, Josh said that if that was the case, repairing relations would be impossible. Whether authorities didn't see it as a full confession or they couldn't legally use it became the least of their concerns just two days later, on February 5th, when Josh's sons came for their weekly visit and he committed the unthinkable. Shortly after the boys walked through the front door, an explosion erupted from inside and the house was instantly consumed by flames. First responders arrived and put out the fire, but found all three Powells, Josh, Braden, and Charlie, dead. An autopsy and subsequent investigation of the fire concluded Josh had meticulously planned the explosion, and there was evidence he'd taken a hatchet to his two boys before igniting the explosion. The tragedy was ruled a murder-suicide, and any chance of concrete answers and saving any semblance of family was lost in the ashes. Despite the death of their main suspect and still no trace of Susan, police continued to investigate and uncovered yet another family secret, this time about Josh's brother, Michael Powell. During questioning, he was uncomfortable, and police felt he knew more than he was letting on or that he'd somehow been involved in disposing of the body. And coincidentally, the same week Josh took his supposedly spontaneous camping trip, the Powell family rented out a property in Salem, Oregon. Police theorized after killing Susan, Josh possibly drove north, meeting Michael halfway to Salem, and handed the body and responsibility of getting rid of it to Michael. However, searching the grounds of the rental property turned up nothing, and Michael Powell jumped from a parking garage roof in 2013, committing suicide before police could question him again. A campsite in Utah frequented by the family was also scoured for remains, but every possible trail led investigators to dead ends. 
The Cox family was left devastated by both the death of their daughter and their grandchildren and feeling they'd lost any chance of closure with the deaths of Josh and Michael Powell. And on top of the horrific tragedies the Powells had already brought upon them, the family wasn't done with them yet. Following Josh's death, his mother and sister tried to claim Susan's insurance assets worth a staggering $2.3 million, but after a lengthy lawsuit, Judy and Chuck Cox were granted legal control over Susan's entire estate. But it was little consolation after the West Valley City Police announced in May 2013 that they had officially closed Susan's disappearance case. Unfortunately, Susan's wish for any sort of a happily ever after was never realized. Not for her her sons, or the family members left in the devastating aftermath. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. But keep the lights off and tune into my last episode of Seriously Strange on horrifying creatures pulled out of the ocean. You can either press on screen or the link below to watch. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.